Today is December 28th, 2011, and we are at the residence of Carolyn Jane Blau. It's in Lowell, Michigan at 623 North Jefferson. And to my left is Matt Yagostino. In the middle is Carolyn Jane Blau, and I am Nick Blau. Now I'll be conducting the interview with Matt. He's going to be basically running the camera. So first of all, if you could just start off and tell us a little bit about, you know, where you were born and what life was like, that would be fantastic. Um, I was born, uh, um, I think, in uh, Grand Rapids at the hospital, but we, uh, the Butterworth Hospital, but uh, we lived in Granville, and that's where I really grew up, in Granville, and, um, and of course this was during the Depression times, in 1931, and so I'm one of those you call a depression baby, and um, I can't remember too much about my childhood other than that we um, didn't do a lot because my dad was working in the store all the time, and uh, of course at that time you really, there wasn't a whole lot to do. Play it with the rest of the kids around the block, and go back and forth. One time, I remember uh, my brother uh, Jim had uh, the uh, got scarlet fever, and uh, at that time, uh, when you had scarlet fever, uh, everybody was quarantined. The whole block was quarantined, and of course, all the mothers in the block were not very happy with um, the situation because their children all had to be quarantined. And my dad, uh, who was in the store, could not uh, be at home. So he had to go live at a, at a hotel and because of he was in the store. And at that time, of course, why uh, scarlet fever was a, a, a bigger one of the um, diseases than it is now and so he had to live away all the time that Jim was um, in the was with scarlet fever and of course um, no one was supposed to go in his room but um, I used to sneak in the room and sit on the bed and play with him and I never got scarlet fever so whether that is something um, that finally they figured out didn't have to be as as uh, preventive as you know with everybody who takes so much protection as they as they used to. Right. So. Yeah, that's a great story from mm -hmm. from the time of the depression. Yeah. You were born in the Grand Rapids area, though, do you believe? And uh, it was May thirtieth of mm -hmm. nineteen thirty-one, mm -hmm. and then eventually. Um, and a couple days later, you went to uh, Granville. Right. Okay. But your parents weren't from Granville. No. They were from where? They were from South Boardman. Okay. Um, and and when was it that they actually moved from South Boardman to Granville? And if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, maybe who they were and what their names were as well, that would be fantastic. Um, well, my, my parents were both born in uh, South Boardman. And uh, they lived there uh, up through when they went to school. And um, I, my mother um, went away to Ferris to uh, be a secretary, and she didn't like it, so she came home. And she didn't even last the whole year. Um, my dad. He went to, um, I believe, a county normal up there, because that's what they had if you were going to go and be a teacher. And he taught school for a little while up there. And then in, uh, oh, let's see, I really, I think Dad probably came down, and I can't tell you exact dates, but came down uh, to... Uh, Grand Rapids area 
because uh, the depression was, there wasn't any work up in that area either. And uh, he came down and uh, got a job with a C. Thomas store. And uh, they were a grocery outlet. And uh, they, but they were just little one room, one, uh, well, they called them pop and mom stores. They were, they, you did everything. You cut the meat, you uh, packed the groceries, you stocked the shelves, that whole thing. And uh, then in, I think he probably went back up to uh, South Boardman and married my mother New Year's Day. I remember she telling me that. And then they came down to Michigan or to Grand Rapids, I should say, in the Grand Rapids area. And his store was in Granville uh, that he ran for C. Thomas. So that's where, that's how they ended up there. Okay. And, and your mother's name was? Elizabeth. And her last name was? Uh, Nyhart. Okay. Elizabeth Maud Nyhart. Okay. And your, and your father was? Uh, well, his name was Raymond James Barber. And, and they had moved down here to Granville, but at the time yeah. they moved to Granville, uh, they originally didn't have any, any kids. No, okay. no, it, no. Um, it was several years before they had any, and at that time, um, I've been told that Mother used to help Dad in the, in the store uh, when, uh, like, an order would come in, and so she'd stock shelves and that sort of thing at the store. And then my uh, sister, Alga Ray, was born, and uh, but she only lived a very short time. Uh, at that time, uh, births were a little tr trickier than they are now. And um, she had the, co she came with a cord wrapped around her neck, and uh, it uh, she didn't last long. And, and then uh, the year after that, I was born. Mm -hmm. so. so you are one of three in your family. Right. Okay. And you're Carolyn Jane Blau. Right. Barber originally. Right. Um, you had two other brothers, and what were their names? Well, um, my other uh, one brother, his name was Raymond, uh, or Jim, uh, I should say Jim Barber, and um, he, I can't remember what his middle name is now, forgotten that, um, and he was two years younger than I was, so um, he, um, he came with a full head of curly, very curly, curly hair that my mother was ecstatic about. She loved it. And um, I was the one with the more straight hair, but she used to uh, put it in ringlets. Long, that's how the girls used to wear their hair. Um, as you can see in my baby picture, um, my hair was just real fine and uh, rather straight. So, so it was you, and then James, yeah. and then eventually down the way, a number of years yeah. later, yes. about well, 1944 or so, right. then um, your other brother was born, and his right. name was William. It was William Nyhart Barber, of, of which he's not very happy with the Nyhart part, but yeah, he was born when I was 13 years old, and uh, my mother was um, very ill. With, with Bill, um, the pregnancy did not go well. And um, she was in, in bed um, a lot of the time, uh, uh, for a good length of time before he was born, and off and on before that. And then she was in bed um, quite a while after he was born also. Before we go on any further, I just want to show this picture as well here and this one is of uh, Carolyn Jane and her brother James okay. 
Now, sometimes we like to talk a lot about a, little, a few stories that we heard along the way. Mm. And uh, one of those stories that you uh, could share with everybody today was about your parents. And your parents had moved to Granville, and, um, and this was during the time of the Depression and also Prohibition mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they were trying to make something at one mm -hmm. point. Can you tell us a little <laughs> yeah. bit about that? Well, um, they and some of their friends had mixed up a batch of uh, dandelion wine and that um, apparently was quite popular in that era. And um, they were letting it ferment, and it had to be in a dark place. So um, it was in the closet uh, of my folks' apartment. And uh, one day it got a little uh, got a little out of hand and blew up all over the place. <laughs> my mother tells me. So that that was a very upsetting thing. <laughs> thing to have happened yeah. as far as she was concerned. And that was before you were born, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your schooling, too, from uh, from an elementary standpoint. Mm -hmm. You were um, you were at elementary school in Granville, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you, you attended that school. What was what was it like, you know? Could you tell us about the school, what you thought of school, um, you know, maybe a little bit about your life during the elementary years? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like school, I remember that. Um, I, I enjoyed my kindergarten teacher. Um, I always thought that uh, even back then, um, I had kind of made up my mind that that's what I'd like to be. And of course, I thought a kindergarten teacher would be a perfect one to be. Um, the, there was only one elementary school at that time in Granville. Um, it was, it was um, in a building that had two stories, uh, not like some of the ones that we have nowadays that are just one story. So um, the first floor contained like the kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third, I believe. And then uh, as you went from grade to grade by the fourth and fifth and sixth grade were upstairs. The one thing I remember about going upstairs, the fun part of that was uh, that um, on the school building, uh, there was a big um, like tunnel on the outside, uh, was like a big round, um, what would you call it? Uh, Well, no, a, a, a big round uh, uh, tin slide that you went down. And so it, it, when they had fire drills, if you were upstairs, of course, you all went to where you got in line and slid down this big, uh, like, slide, only it was enclosed. And down the side of the building. So one of the big things to go, you know, that was the get up there in the fourth and fifth and sixth grade so you could go down that slide. Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody would like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Now, you live pretty close to your school yes. in a number of different houses. Yes. Um, and you had told me that um, your mother, for a time, you know, had, had kept an eye on you. You liked to go out to recess right. and do some things. But as, as time, you know, went on, things changed a little bit there. Can yeah. you tell us a little well, bit about that? Well, um, mother would always tell. Uh, of course, we lived right across. At one point, we lived right across the street from the school. And uh, so uh, we could come home for lunch in several houses that we lived in. That we had the... Uh, opportunity to go home for lunch and um, and of course the one house that was right across from the school um, and mother said that she never liked to be in the front of the house um, when uh, recess was because of the fact that she could watch us out there on the monkey bars we had monkey bars and we also had uh, bars that were around the grass area so 
the kids, we keep the kids off the, but it was very easy to put your leg over that and you just swing around and around on it, and which your head only came about that far from the, from the um, uh, sidewalk. So she was always waiting for me to come home or be brought home with uh, either a broken arm or my head busted open or something or other, but it never happened. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, your home life, too. Let's talk about, um, you know, some of the chores that you did, what life was like around the house. You also told me that you had uh, a pet, a dog, mm -hmm. Fluffy, mm -hmm. too. Could you share a little bit about what life was like around the house? Well, let's see. Uh, some of the things that happened around, well, I had to, of course, help with uh, dishes, usually, at, at the house and uh, made my own bed and learned to iron. And of course, uh, when you were being taught to iron, you ironed everything. You ironed underwear, you ironed the towels, you, you know, so that you were sure that uh, you had a good background in ironing. Um, and uh, also, I helped mother um, get supper, get a meal at, at, at certain times. Uh, one of the times I can remember, it was the December 7th, um, which um, was the day that they hit Pearl Harbor. We were um, just having uh, dinner. We always had a big dinner on, on Sunday. And a Dad had come home from the drugstore and, and had gotten a paper. And uh, it, it came over the radio that, uh, that uh, the Japanese had hit Pearl Harbor. That still sticks in my memory. Um, as far as our animals were concerned, well, one of them, are, that I had to was a cat that I used to uh, dress up and uh, take around in my baby buggy. Do you remember and, what the cat's name uh, was? No, I don't no. even remember the cat's name okay. anymore. But uh, she lived a uh, very hectic life as far as she was concerned because I was always dressing her up or I was dressing up fluffy. Uh -huh. uh, and taking them around in my in a baby buggy that I'd gotten for Christmas. And one and Fluffy, um, as he got older, um, he was um, susceptible to having fits and um, or seizures like. And I can remember one day when he had a seizure, in the kitchen, and of course, um, Mother and, Bill and Jim and, and I were there, and we were all crying and figuring that he was dead. And while we're crying and carrying on about Fluffy, he up and walked away. Oh, of, course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Now, you've got a good story to share with us also about uh, you being the older sister and taking care of your younger brother. James. Yeah. And um, one of the things that you were required to do, or at least your parents wanted you to do, was to go to Sunday school. So if you could tell us a little bit about that, that would be okay. great as well. Well, um, we lived in Granville, and we were Methodists. And uh, the there was a, one Methodist church in Granville. The town was made up of uh, Dutch heritage people. And so the uh, Dutch Reformed Church was the big church in, in Granville. And, but there was one little Methodist church. And we used to, um, Mother and Dad would uh, give us our money for our offering at, at the, uh, and send us off to Sunday school. And Jim, um, being a couple years younger than I, I was looking out for him. But he uh, 
he had a little different take on life. He did not uh, always want to do what, what was uh, asked of him to do. So he tried more than once to get me to uh, fool our Sunday school, um, what we were to give there, and uh, just go to the, um, the ice cream store and buy ice cream and never mind going to Sunday school. But I uh, was always the one who said, no, we can't do that. Uh, this is what we were supposed to do. I've since changed a little bit, but <laughs> I, we, we, uh, we used to have some arguments over that. Yeah. Now, during those years as well, elementary years, um, and with the family, you were also involved in a, in a variety of different activities, and one of those activities was the Campfire Girls. No, well... Could you tell us a little bit about the yeah. Campfire Girls and, well, and maybe some of the things that happened along the way? Well, let's see. Um, I belong to a campfire group in, in, from Granville, and uh, we did the things that all the Campfire Girls do, you know, to earn beads and so on and so forth, to put on our on our uh, uniforms. Um, one of the things that we did was to um, sell cookies. And, um, and so when we were, when I was selling cookies, um, why we'd have to go, you know, we went from door to door around the neighborhood. And as I was coming up to this uh, one house and knocked on the door, around the back of the house came this uh, big chow dog, pure white chow dog. And um, I was up on the porch uh, knocking on the door and he jumped on me. And um, I couldn't get him off from me because he was, he was heavier than I was, even though I had a snowsuit on. And he bit through my snowsuit, um, put a tear in my, in my leg and one on my arm, because I had my arm up to protect my face. And uh, the lady of the house could not get him off either. So instead of, of uh, trying to get him off from me, she pulled me out from through the doorway out from underneath him. And I was laid up for in bed for about six weeks with uh, with these injuries. And uh, it, all those things, of course, had at that time, as they do now, had to be reported to the health department. And so when the doctor reported the bites to the health department, uh, they went to get the dog um, because they didn't, um, for rabies, to check for rabies, and the people moved in the night before or during the time that I was hurt and the time that they got there. They moved, they moved away with the dog, so I, I had to go through some kind of rough times to get Let's talk a little bit about your junior high life as well. Um, some different activities that you were involved with. Um, you could tell us a little bit about your your feelings and your personality when it comes to sports originally. <laughs> um, you know, if, if there were any uh, instruments that you had played or started to play, and, and maybe who some of your friends were and what you liked to do with them. Mm. Well, um, in, in junior high, uh, we did have a gym and but any of the any of the games that we played um, I usually was one of the last ones to be picked on uh, picked for a game because um, I just was not very well coordinated and so um, I wasn't one of the ones that did the best job at whatever it was we were playing in fact, in, even in, um, at that time and through high school, um, girls were, they didn't have athletic things like ball and 
those sort of things for uh, girls. And the, that just didn't happen. So um, you, we didn't have any of that kind of sports. So, and, but I did um, take piano lessons for a while, and for a number of years. And, and I can't tell you how many it was, but finally in high school, I, uh, by the time I reached high school, I didn't um, take it anymore. And you said you had um, a good friend back in the junior high level, mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you like to do uh, one activity, especially with her. What was well, that? Uh, one activity that I was uh, halfway decent at was bike riding, and so um, her name was Betty and um, O'Brien, and we used to, well, it was Betty Newell O'Brien, and O'Brien was her married name, but when we were back in school, her name was Newell. And uh, we would just take off and ride around Granville. And that was, that was really my big uh, outings that I did. And you'd mentioned before, too, you know, you'd listen to the radio different times. That's how you got yeah. some different information. Right. But there's also a program that you like to listen to on the radio. Um, what was that? Well, um, of course, um, uh, we liked the Lone Ranger, and uh, there was Tom Mix that we'd listen to. Um, let's see, uh, Stella Davis was another um, one. It, uh, they were radio ones, but they were like, um, they were every day, so it was a new chapter every day. And, and it, those were kind of, that radio did that. That's the way we did. And I used to, I could listen to that and still study. And uh, like, you know, some kids do. But, uh, listening to the TV, but I could listen to music and, and or a program and, and still. So you could multitask just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a little bit. And, um, <laughs> well, you know, while you were listening to your radio programs, you are doing some studying, you mentioned. What were some of those subjects that you liked in school? What did you like oh, to study? Well, I liked, um, I liked history. Uh, was one of my best. I was never good in, in arithmetic or math, that was not reading, I liked reading. Um, the, the history, I guess, was about, you know, English was probably next. Okay. About this time, you had also talked a little bit about your family. And um, you, you had said that, you know, about Christmas time, there was something special that you, uh, that your family would receive sometimes from, oh. from uh, a little bit further up north. Mm -hmm. And if you could tell us a little bit about that special item that you can receive around okay. Christmas, that'd be great. Um, at uh, Christmas time, um, my grandpa and grandma uh, Barber, uh, who still lived in South Boardman, uh, grandpa would go out and cut us a Christmas tree. And they would bundle it all up and send it down on the train for our uh, for our Christmas present. So every year we look forward to a Christmas tree from Grandma and Grandpa Barber and to arrive from South Boardman and, and then we could set it up and decorate it. So that was a present from them. That was that was all they could afford. Yeah. Now in the in the winter time right around Christmas you'd look forward to receiving something from South Boardman. But in the summertime, you would sometimes travel up to South Florida. Yes, yes. And what were some of the things that you would do up in South oh, Florida? Well, um, being both uh, grandparents lived in South Florida, uh, and South Florida not being very big, it was like if you blinked, you would have missed the whole town. Um, Grandma Hat and uh, uh, Grandpa Frank, that uh, was uh, the barbers, um, they lived on one end of the town and Grandma Nyhart uh, lived on the other end of the town. And my dad would take us up there and leave us a lot to spend our summers up there. And um, 
because that's about when we get up there was that would be the only time um, because it was about a three hour trip from Granville um, five hours way back then but shorter time now and we would spend our summers up there with either um, well with both of them we take turns going between houses uh, of course we always we love to uh, be at Grandma Hatt's and, and Grandpa Frank's house because uh, Grandpa Frank was a, a, a lumberjack in his earlier years. And uh, he also uh, liked animals. And, he, and some years when we went up, he would have a pet coon that he kept at the house. And uh, they would have their own little dishes out in uh, out in the, uh, well, what they called the pump room, where, the, where they got water, and where they would uh, take the food that Grandma would give them, and out there and wash it in their little dish and sit there and eat it. And we used to enjoy that. One year, uh, Grandpa Frank had a, had a bear, a uh, cub bear, that he had gotten from some place and of course as as uh, whichever animal it was that they had as they got older why then they have to get rid of them because they you know uh, would get a little mean so but, so that that was what we would do and we uh, as I got older uh, when we'd be up there in the summertime um, I would pick pickles uh, go out in the fields and pick pickles because uh, in South Boardman there was a, um, a pickle uh, place uh, where Heinz had uh, this big uh, well, holding place uh, where they would, we, uh, farmers from all around there would plant uh, pickles and then uh, bring them there and uh, they would be in, have big vats there that you put the pickles in. And then the train um, would be, right, it was right next to this big factory, like, and then they would come and, and take carloads of pickles onto the Heinz pickle factory. And I also uh, picked cherries um, one summer. Don't want to do that again. Yeah. Don't want to pick pickles again either. Uh, and uh, but we'd make a little money, uh, you know, as we'd go to different farms and, and do that. And we would also go out in uh, on the plains that um, were it just land that nobody, uh, well, the government owned, but um, and that would be huckleberries. Um, they're a form of uh, blueberry, uh, and uh, we would pick huckleberries and a little plant about that high off the ground, uh, and that would grow out there on the plains. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So for the most most part of your life, you lived in Granville, yes. um, but in the summers, you know, you would go up to South Boardman mm -hmm. sometimes, and, and you'd interact with uh, your grandparents mm -hmm. and, and different relatives and people like that. Um, but let's move a little bit ahead here and talk about high school, oh. because high school for you was at a variety of different locations, mm -hmm. and you started off your high school career uh, in Granville, mm -hmm. but eventually, you know, you went elsewhere, and eventually mm -hmm. you came here to Lowell. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about Granville, going to high school, um, your ninth grade, your tenth grade years. Um, you had a couple different stories that you could share with us. Um, one was a, was a story about a a boy that you had met oh, in yeah. study hall. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it, I can't remember whether it was ninth or tenth grade, but anyway, uh, one of the boys in my study hall um, it called me uh, bird legs, referred to me as bird legs. And um, I can remember that um, upset me. And so I stood up and hit him over the head with a book. 
and of course I was called up to the front of the study hall and um, the it happened to be a, a lady who was one of our teachers I can't remember her name now but uh, anyway, she asked me uh, why I had done that, and I told her what it was that had been said and uh, why I it made me mad, and I, I hit him over the head. And she said, okay, and sent me back to the study hall to my seat again. Just don't let it you know, happen again, but <laughs> anyway. Now, in high school and, and in other grades, there's always a special teacher that uh, you'll never forget, yeah. that you always remember. Mm. And uh, about this time, ninth, tenth grade, mm. you had a very uh, special teacher mm. that uh, you should be able to share a story about well, with us as well. Miss um, um, uh, Vugdevine, her name was, and she was uh, an English teacher. And she, um, well, she did two things. The first thing was that of course, back in, in that time, there wasn't a lot of money, and teachers didn't get a lot of pay. And she had two dresses. Uh, uh, one dress she wore in uh, the first half of the year, and that was a purple one, and the other one was a black one, and she wore that the other half of the year. And I decided right then, knowing, or that what I wanted to do was be a teacher, I decided that I would never, never enter the classroom in the same outfit two days in a row, and I never did, never. Uh, even though when Grandpa and I first got married, we didn't have a lot of money for me to do that, but I, uh, I never wore the same thing two days in a row. She also, uh, was the one that would, um, when she'd call on me, she'd call me Caroline instead of Carolyn. So, uh, and I used to remind her it was Carolyn, and she still called me Caroline. So finally, I went down to the office and said, uh, uh, just change my name to Jane, and, because um, I was I was tired of, her calling me Caroline. So from then on for a long time I went by Jane, just by Jane. Now it was about this time as well that your your dad had been working at the grocery store year after year after mm -hmm. year. And um, he was now told that he was going to move from Granville and open a new store in Traverse City. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of changed your life as well because right. obviously the family had to pack up and move there. Right. So could you tell us a little bit about your move to Traverse City and how you felt about that? Well, first of all, when um, C. Thomas stores were bought by Kroger, my dad went to uh, work for Kroger and uh, for t er, uh, running the Kroger stores. And um, as time went on, the stores got bigger and bigger. And so... Um, Kroger had asked him to go up and open a new store, a first self-serve store in the city of Traverse City. They um, had built the store up there, and so we had to move. And uh, the day that we moved, that the moving van came to pick us up, um, it started to snow. And uh, as the day went along and more things got packed in the in this big van, um, it snowed harder. And so by the time that we were following the van up to Traverse City, it was a definitely a snowstorm. It was a very long and scary ride, as I remember. We were all packed in the car. My brother Jim had a um, crow uh, that he had captured and was trying to train. And so he, the crow was in the car. Um, Bill had a, um, a turtle in, uh, in a fishbowl. And Fluffy, of course, uh, 
was was along and uh, and then mother and dad and myself so it was quite a menagerie in the car and as I say it was a very scary and long ride by the time we got to Traverse City. Now once you got up to Traverse City you had uh, you had certain jobs that you did up there besides go to school. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a couple different things that you did. Uh, you worked with your dad at, at the grocery yeah, store a little bit, yeah. doing some different things. And uh, every once in a while, you do some babysitting jobs as right. well. Could you tell us a little bit about those things? Well, let's see. Um, at, at the store, what I would do would be to um, sit. Uh, they had a little place um, in, up near the ceiling of the store that I could sit in and um, watch for people who would um, try to swipe things and try to take things. So I, I would do that quite a bit for Dad. And uh, then also I would babysit. And, uh, and I would babysit for uh, different people around in the area where, where we lived. Yes. And we lived right on the bay. Um, in, uh, uh, in a house uh, or a big apartment, it was, up over a garage that, um, that had been built for servants. And uh, that's where we found a, a place to stay because um, things were kind of hard to find uh, any place to live at that time. And you said that was in the Millican house? Yes. Is that right? Yes. And, and who was that? Well, uh, there was uh, one of our governors was a Millican, and it was uh, his relation. Um, and uh, they also, at that time, had a big department store in uh, Traverse City, the Millican department store. And while you were up there, you attended uh, Traverse City High School. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about your experience at Traverse City High School and then also maybe share a little bit about your, uh, your brother's experience there too? Well, um, I didn't have a lot of trouble um, of fitting in with the high school. Uh, we, um, we left Granville when I was in the 11th grade. And so I finished the 11th grade in Trevor City. And uh, I seemed to make friends and uh, flowed into the school world better than my brother Jim did. Um, he, he, did he had a little trouble doing that. And I would find him at my locker a lot. And, and he was there so much that um, many of the, uh, the friends that I made up there thought that he was my boyfriend. I had to tell him, no, that was my brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, so you're up there in Traverse City. Mm -hmm. And um, after, uh, after your junior year, or about at the end of mm -hmm. your junior year or so, you're your father finds out that he's not going to be up in Traverse City for very long. Mm -hmm. um, instead, he was he had the opportunity to uh, uh, move mm -hmm. back, you know, down mm -hmm. not too far from Granville, mm -hmm. but to Lowell here, mm -hmm. and to open up um, uh, or start a new store, to buy into right. a new store. Right. Um, so, could you tell us uh, about that chance your well, father had? Um, my, I think my dad had always wanted to have his own store again. Um, his, very own store and so um, when he was when we were in Traverse City and he was running the Kroger store up there uh, he apparently got wind that uh, there was a store in uh, Lowell to buy a C. A C. Thomas store that was still in Lowell and so he uh, and my mother talked that over and so he retired from Kroger and uh, came down here to Lowell and uh, purchased the C. Thomas store, and, which is right next to Dr. Regan's. Um, at that time, it was Dr. Oatley, who was a dentist in, in the 
Town of Lowell and uh, this little store. And so um, to start my senior year, why we moved back down here to Lowell. And, uh, and what was the name of that grocery store when you're? Oh, you're well, it, it became the, uh, when after Dad purchased it, it became the D&O grocery that was Barber and Oatley because um, my dad owned the um, everything in the store, but Dr. Oatley owned the building, and so it became the and All right, and from what I understand, you were pretty excited to move back down here to Lowell because you didn't really like those Traverse City no, winters very no, much at all. No, I did not. It was very cold, and we lived right on the bay, and I was very happy to get back down here where the winters weren't quite as cold yeah. as up there. So when you moved to Lowell uh, for the first time, this was going to be your senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. You had one year left in, mm -hmm. in school. And um, where was it that you lived, first lived in Lowell? Well, uh, we first lived in Lowell out on M91 uh, at a farm called the Pinckney Farm. And it was a, a big old house. Um, I, I loved it because I always liked that kind of architecture. Uh, it had a fireplace in several rooms in that house, and it kind of set up on a little bit of a hill. Um, it was a, a big. It was a big working farm. We did not work the farm, of course, but we just rented rented the house. And did you live with some relatives as well out there? Oh, uh, before, before we got to that house, um, um, while Dad and Mother were hunting for, for a house, uh, we stayed with my cousin um, who, in the Creston area. Um, and my, my dad's um, brother's wife and their and their daughter. We stayed there for uh, f a few few weeks before we got into a house out on 91. Okay. All right, so you started Lowell High School in, in the 12th grade, mm -hmm. and uh, the location of that high school was here in town. Do you remember what the mm -hmm. cross streets were of that high school? Oh, well, let's see. Um, it was um, Monroe and... Uh, Monroe and King? Yeah, well, King Street was right there, yes. Okay. It ran into Monroe and the, and the school set right there on a, on a little hill, mm -hmm. on a little knoll okay. that's not there anymore. Okay. All right, and uh, so that would have been about 1948, 1949, mm -hmm. that time mm -hmm. period for your senior year of school. Mm -hmm. And um, different times you'd, you'd have to ride the bus from that Pinckney right. Farm once you'd moved right. down here. And uh, can you tell us about one of those bus rides that you well, had? Well, I know one of the bus rides, uh, most of them were very uneventful. But this time it was in the spring, and the roads were very muddy. And, of course, there were the little back roads, you know, the country roads. And as we were coming down the one country road, a car was coming from the other way, and it... Um, it wanted to take more of the road than than uh, what it needed, and the bus anyway ran off the side of the road, and we we tipped on our side, and of course everybody went flying to the front of the bus. Yeah, no one got hurt, but every, we had some black and blue bruises and so on and so forth. And, everybody got out okay. okay. Now, um, in, in high school uh, at Lowell, you seemed to make friends pretty quick, um, had a number of different good friends mm -hmm. that you made along the way, but you were also concerned with some of the classes that you were going to take too. And you're kind of goal-oriented, you had certain classes along the teaching field that you wanted mm -hmm. to take. What were some of those classes that, uh, that you were, were going to take, that you knew you were going to take to become a teacher? That you know, well, just, um, gosh, just all the, the really core classes that you would need, um, you know, um, 
your history, your reading, your literature. Um, the oh, let's see, we had one uh, class that I didn't have to take, but I did. I mean, to fill in, which was a. Uh, um, Mr. White taught it. Uh, I, I, Your business law class? Yes, yeah, it was a business law class. It, it was a fun, one of the fun classes to take. One of the classes that I wanted to take uh, was a typing class. But at that time, uh, you couldn't take typing unless you were going to be a stenographer or a, or a uh, secretary or something like that. So I never did get to take uh, typing. Um, many years later, I thought I went back to take one of the uh, after school classes up here, but uh, I never finished that either for, I can't remember the reason why, probably something to do with family. Yeah. Now there was one class that you were uh, taking in high school that you didn't really care so much for, and that was a class that Mr. Avery had taught. Oh, uh, yes. Was, well, that, 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 was, that? that was algebra, like math. I was very, <laughs> I'm not an algebra-oriented person, and uh, most of the time uh, I was, I spent crying to Mr. Avery about that class. That's how I got through it. Okay. <laughs> was, right. Because Mr. Avery, I think, felt sorry for me and just wanted to get me out of his hair. <laughs> yeah. So, now, with, with some of the bad classes like algebra, you know, um, mm -hmm. that you didn't care for so much at that time that you kind of cried through and made mm -hmm. it through, mm -hmm. um, there were also some other good classes, and you had taken uh, study hall as well. Oh. And in that course. study hall class, you'd met somebody pretty special. Mm -hmm. Who was that? Well. Uh, there was this one young man who sat in front of me um, because then study hall, it was just like every class. You sat according to your name. And so he was, he's uh, your last name. And uh, so this young man named Ivan Blau sat in front of me and I thought he was pretty cute. Yeah. So you thought he was cute enough. Mm -hmm. And there was a dance called the Sadie Hawkins dance. <laughs> yes. And you decided to act. Yeah. So what according to you, yeah. what how how did you how did you act to get to that dance? What did well, you do? I um I asked him if I saw him I think in the hall. And and I finally got up my nerve to ask him if he would take me to the Sadie Hawkins Day dance because that was a dance where the girls could ask the boys, uh, you know. And uh, that was the way I say it happened. That wasn't the way that... Well, what way did he say it actually happened? <laughs> well, according to uh, Ivan, um, he said uh, that I met him in the hall I knocked him down, stood on his back, one foot on his back, and said, you're taking me to the Sadie Hawkins Day Dance. Right. <laughs> but that, that really didn't happen. Right. I think he actually had a better story, but I'm <laughs> yes. glad that we cleared that up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, tell us a little bit about how you got to that dance. Oh, well, well um, Ivan didn't have a car. Um, he had his folks' car, but it, he wasn't going to be able to uh, uh, take me in that car. So he asked uh, his best friend, who became the best man at our wedding, um, to uh, take me, uh, come and uh, take him to get me and take us to the dance. So we were chauffeured to the dance by Phil C's. Or by Kelvin C's? Kel Kel C's. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm sure that um, Ivan had met your parents. He had come to your house. Mm. He had picked you up, you know, and, and met your parents mm. at that point. But um, there, there were other... No, he hadn't. Oh, he, he didn't at that point? <laughs> no. Oh. No, that was the first. He met them. Okay, that was the, that was the first mm -hmm. time there. Mm -hmm. But um, 
there were other times that uh, that he was coming over and and you'd had somebody else at the house. No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that story all about? Well, um, there was a young man that I had met in Traverse City, um, whose name was Irvin, and uh, he had come down from Traverse City to see me, and. Um, my grandmother happened to, my grandma Nyhart happened to be at our house at that time. And um, so she was introduced to Irvin and he, we were at the house and uh, then he had to leave. And as he was leaving, I was ushering him out the back door. Um, Ivan Blau was coming in the front door to see me. And, of course, Grandma uh, it didn't realize, <laughs> didn't know Ivan's name. So anyway, she said, well, hello there, Irvin. <laughs> he, he, so I had to explain to uh, uh, Ivan later all about that. Yep. Well, things worked out for the best, obviously. Right. And um, you ended up dating Ivan for, mm -hmm. for a while mm -hmm. here. And, um, until things went further than that, but you ended up dating him for a while, and uh, he he'd meet your family, and uh, there was one time where he met Uncle Bill. Oh, what what did he? Yeah. Uh, what was his impression? His well, first impression of Uncle Bill. Well, when he first met my brother Bill, um, he was uh, very um, upset um, because Bill was small in stature, and he was and he was very. Uh, tiny, tiny boned and, and did not have a lot of meat on his bones, as we say. And so Ivan was just sure that uh, Bill was never going to live um, because he, he had never seen a child that, uh, that uh, tiny. <laughs> and I can remember him saying a number of times, uh, you you're just sure that he's he's okay, and if I if I pick him up, he's not going to break. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, eventually you got to uh, the end of your high school career, right? And uh, you graduated, so we have your graduation okay. picture right there. Maybe okay. you could hold that one up for us, okay. like that one, know. and that one just a little bit to see what Carolyn Jane looked like as a as a senior at Lowell High School. Mr. Avery was the one who did our pictures. Now, and Mr. Avery, the same mm -hmm. Mr. Avery as the math teacher? No, no. This was Mr. Avery, who was a, a photographer. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Relation? Nor Nor I don't think so. Okay. Norton Avery, who has uh, done many uh, things and quite, quite well known. Okay. So you've had this plan for quite a while. When you graduate from high school, you want to go on, you want to get a degree, you want to be a teacher of mm -hmm. some sort, and possibly mm -hmm. a kindergarten teacher mm -hmm. is what you had uh, in place. Mm -hmm. So um, to be a teacher, you had to go to a, well, back in the day, you went to a normal school. Well, I, I went there because um, my folks didn't have the money to send me to uh, regular college. I could have gone to Western, but they didn't have that kind of money. So, but I did find that there was a county normal over in Hastings that uh, would be a, a, a one-year school that um, after you finished there, you could teach in a one-room school, which there were still a lot of them um, around you could uh, teach there for two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you went to Hastings and mm -hmm. you were there from Monday through Friday, right. taking different classes for two right. semesters for that entire mm -hmm. year. Um, you had a friend that was over there at the right. County Normal School mm -hmm. with you as well. What was her name? Well, uh, I had a number of friends over there. I um, lived uh, Monday through Friday with a gal named Bev Holtz uh, from school here both graduated together, and uh, we were both wanting to be teachers. So we uh, had an apartment over there Monday through Friday, 
And then uh, one of the other teachers, or one of the other girls, I should say, that was over there, came from Freeport, uh, Dolores Dip. And uh, so I would ride back over there um, to Freeport with, uh, with Dolores and a number of other gals and one guy that came from the Freeport area. And then Ivan would pick me up in, in Freeport and we'd uh, go to stop at his mother's house for, and dad's house for supper. We'd stop out there, fun. Now, while you were over there in Hastings, um, you had some fun activities mm. that you that you do every mm. once in a while. Um, some things that you were probably better at, and some things that mm. you weren't so good at. But yet, they were activities that you had some fun right. with. What what kind of things did you do for fun while you were at normal school? Well, let's see. We had um, we had a bowling team, and at first um, I was on it, and then they. <laughs> I was such a lousy bowler that they asked me to, um, you know, uh, if I would, <laughs> would resign from the team. So, and and they went on to be have a better team than what I could have done with them. Uh, the other thing was we used to like to go roller skating, and we do that every once in a while uh -huh. at roller skating. Now you had a certain teacher as well um, mm -hmm. over at County Normal mm -hmm. School that kind of taught you some of the ropes mm -hmm. in, in a certain way. Um, how, how did that work into your uh, second semester at, at uh, County Normal School? Did oh, well, Miss Tusink was the teacher, our teacher, and she was great. Um, she had taught for years and, and, uh, and now she was teaching uh, and uh, uh, she was, she was, she did a, a great job, uh, I think. And I used to keep in contact with her a long time before she passed away. Um, the second semester, though, was when uh, they took you out to a country school. Uh, you didn't get to choose; they just um, chose them for you and or placed you in one county. Uh, country school and you just were in there and uh, the one I went to um, the day that I walked in um, and the teacher introduced me to the school uh, school kids and then he picked up I think um, some paperback that he was uh, reading and said good luck and that was it. And he went out and sat in his car for the rest of the time. And that's how I got introduced to teaching. Okay. You, you kind of learned very quick. Yeah, you had to learn the ropes as you went, <laughs> yeah, didn't you? That's right. Okay. That's right. But that didn't scare you away. No. You'd gone no. through the schooling, you knew what you were yeah. going to do, and right. um, and you got a job. Right. And so where did you teach your first year oh, okay. of Okay, first school? year I taught at, uh, on 36th Street, it was Mapes School. Uh, on 36th Street, and uh, I was um, very happy, you know, to have a job, and uh, very excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yep, very excited, um, but at the same time, you knew that it was going to be a lot of work, mm -hmm. because you, you didn't just have one grade. No. You, I, had, you had multiple grades, right, I and, had, and so which grades yeah. did you have? I had kindergarten through the eighth grade, and there was at least one or two children in. Uh, the only grade that did, only had one in was um, my kindergarten class, and but everybody else had. But it was it was a neat way because um, the children that heard the lessons from uh, everybody else's lesson from right right the beginning. So when you got to that grade, you pretty well knew and you could embellish on things that you wanted to find out about. And everybody else, everybody was uh, very, um, very courteous to each other. And, and when they went out to play, everybody played together. And you knew that if you were playing softball, 
you wouldn't be playing softball. Uh, the pitcher wasn't going to throw to a kindergartner the way he was going to th throw to a sixth grader. And so you, you just learn all those things. It, it, it's something that doesn't happen nowadays in, in our school system. We aren't as tolerant of each, of each grade as, you know, as maybe they should be, the grades above or below. Now, you had a, a couple different incidents that happened at May School. Mm -hmm. And uh, originally, I believe that the school was supposed to be clean for you. Right. Uh, one of the board members' sons right. was supposed to clean that school. However, it didn't really happen. So right. what happened? What did you do? Well, um, they, w I found out that it wasn't cleaned. Um, my dad took me out there the um, day before school started. Uh, to just look it over and, and get things in place. And we found that the school had not been cleaned like it was supposed to. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the um, board members' sons was supposed to have cleaned it. And um, he didn't do the job as he should have. So uh, my dad and I... Uh, went ahead and cleaned everything up uh, as uh, best we could in, in the time that we had. Um, so <clears throat> I never did get around to the furnace. <coughs> they had an oil heater uh, in the one-room school. And uh, it used to be, even before that, they had a wood stove. But we now had oil heaters. And you had to um, light the oil heater when it got ready to, uh, got cold enough in, in the uh, room on the days, you know, going into October and so on would, would be cold. So uh, it got to be about October something, I can't remember what now, but anyway, uh, it was cold in the schoolroom and so I went to light the heater, and uh, the heater blew up when I, because it hadn't been cleaned and all this soot and the chimney and everything, and <clears throat> the heater blew up, and uh, it singed off my eyebrows and some of my hair up here, and uh, after everybody was out and we were, I don't even remember that whole thing how everybody got out or anything but anyway as we were out there in the yard and I'm trying to decide uh, what we're going to do because we didn't have a telephone or anything to call anybody um, why uh, one of the little boys that I had came up to me and said uh, Miss Barber do you know what you said when the heater blew up and I said, I have no idea what I said. And he said, you said, get the hell out of here. And <laughs> which was not what I should have said, but I said, well, it worked, didn't it? It got you out and every, everybody had did get out. But that was, that was the one story I still remember from <laughs> my teaching days back there. And, in the country school. All right. Now, there was one other thing that happened there as well, and I think this happened in the winter. Oh. Um, there was one of a uh, young boy was sledding. Mm, Could you tell us a little bit about well, that story too? That, that wasn't uh, quite as dramatic as the, as the fire one, but um, they used to bring their sleds, and we had a place out behind the school where you could sled, but the rule was that you had to wait till one person was down at the bottom of the hill before another one. Well, that, of course, didn't happen. And uh, one of our, one of the children's um, fingers got caught between the head of his sled and the back of another sled. And he pulled his finger out like this in, a, in his glove. And he had gloves on, but anyway, it took his nail, ripped his whole nail 
right out of his finger. And uh, so, um, of course, I had to, uh, the only telephone was uh, across the street at, at one of the neighbors. So I um, bound his hand up and took him across the street and we called his mother and she came and, and got him. After that, there was no more sledding on yeah. the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, those two incidents didn't scare you away from his teaching. Right. And you said you want to continue to do it. Right. And in fact, you knew you need to take um, some more classes along the way right. as well. So um, in the summer, you decided to take classes at Olivet. Right. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you took classes with? Well, I took classes with a gal named Vi Sutherland. Um, I had met her at County Normal, and she was from um, Grand Ledge area. And uh, so we got together, and um, we b went to Olivet. And why we picked that, I don't have any idea. But anyway, they were offering, I, I probably was, they were offering some summer classes that we could use. And so we went over there to Olivet uh, to summer classes together over there. Yeah. All right, you had a pretty busy, busy school year, right. and you were planning on taking classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, something else pretty big kind of happened in the middle between your first and your second year of, mm -hmm. of teaching. Mm -hmm. So um, Ivan must have asked you to marry him. Right, he did. Okay. Now, yeah. do you remember how he how he asked you? Mm -hmm. No, uh, I, I can't say as I do. I, I don't I, uh, I, I don't remember how he asked me. Okay, but either way, you were married by October right, right, of, of, right, that, of that coming right, year. Right. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, about your wedding day? Well, the wedding day had to, of course, um, I was teaching by then, I was teaching over at Star. And, um, and, but the wedding day had to take place um, in, on a Thursday because, in the afternoon because that was the day that, that my dad closed the grocery store. In fact, all the stores in Lowell always closed every Thursday afternoon. That used to be a regiment that they did. And, and so that's when we could get married, was on, on that Thursday. It also happened to be um, the uh, Teachers Well Institute that always used to have. Uh, and it was always like a Thursday and a Friday. Well, it happened to be that <laughs> we planned it for that Thursday uh, so that we had the weekend uh, thir uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then I went back to teaching school on Monday. The Lowell Area Historical Museum is proud to sponsor community oral history interviews. The Lowell Area Historical Museum educates, enriches, and inspires our community and visitors through the preservation and presentation of Lowell Area history. For reservations and more information, contact the Lowell Area Historical Museum at 616-897-7688. The Lowell Area Historical Museum is proud to sponsor community oral history interviews. The Lowell Area Historical Museum educates, enriches, and inspires our community and visitors through the preservation and presentation of Lowell Area history. For reservations and more information, contact the Lowell Area Historical Museum at 616-897-7688.